Hi, I am Sanya, pursuing my PhD from IIT Delhi. I was a Fulbright Nehru doctoral researcher at Columbia University and I am here with another video discussing in detail what were the challenges that I faced living in the US. One of the hardest things was to find an appropriate accommodation during my stay for nine months. Why it's very daunting to find accommodation but I can assure you that if you just stay at it and be like you know very persistent you are definitely going to find one. Again your options will vary depending on the fact whether you're going to a big city or a small city. If you go to a big city of course you'll have more options but then also it will be more competitive for you and if you're going to a smaller city then your options may be limited and in fact it may be even hard for you to find trustworthy sources to find a house. What a lot of my friends did when they went to smaller cities was actually to email their professors directly and ask them if they could help them in any way in accommodation. Now, what are the places that you could look for accommodation? The first thing you do is you check your university website and even email whosoever is taking care of their accommodation and they will give you a lot of options. I did not take university accommodation because it was very expensive but look up Google Maps, try to reach out to people and ask them what are the neighborhoods that you could live. I studied at Columbia so some of the potential neighborhoods that I knew of were Harlem, Upper West Side, Washington Heights, Morningside Heights. So, so apart from that, join Facebook groups, your university Facebook groups. I also join New York City Facebook groups. StreetEasy.com is a nice website where you could find good houses. The best bet would be to get a sublet. Ask your university to help you find out. Sublet is basically a place where someone has already rented. It's just that they are going on field work, say for example, for two months or for a year and they would want someone else to take up their house. So that's called a sublease so that they don't have to pay the rent. You don't have to worry about furniture or appliances in that case. How did I find my accommodation? I found it through a Facebook group. I lived in Harlem. I lived on 116th Street. But on the eastern side, it was an excellent location. All grocery stores were almost like a two minute walk. There was a bus which went to Columbia University right across the street. University was about a 30 minute walk. My landlord was also very nice. A lot of landlords, they do not want to give you a place for less than 12 months. That's something that I really struggled with. And I actually ended up signing a 12 month lease where I already informed my housemates and I told them that I will be living there for nine months, but I'll help you find someone for the remaining three months and I did end up finding someone. So that is something which you could do if you do not end up finding a house which is ready to give a lease to you for less than 12 months. So you, you should keep your options open. One thing when you rent a house is that something that landlords require is to show them a credit score or that you should have a guarantor. Credit score is basically a score where you show your purchasing power, you show that you are financially stable and sound. So the landlords want to check that you are earning say four times or five times whatever is the rent to be sure that you are a financially secure person and will be able to pay your rent in time. Of course now if you go to the US for the first time you will not have a credit score. I did not have a credit score. So one thing that I did was uh, to try to find a guarantor and my housemate supervisor kindly agreed to become a guarantor. If you do not have a guarantor, if you do not have a credit score, what I would recommend is try to negotiate with the landlord and try to speak with them and explain the situation. Email them your grant agreement and tell them that you will be able to pay the rent in time. Sometimes they also ask you to give an application fee, but I would recommend that do not go for those houses where you have to pay an application fee because most of the times there's no guarantee that if, even if you give an application fee, which which is like around you know, 50 to 100 dollars, which is a lot of money that you will get a house. Also, it's hard for you to find accommodation without being scammed if you're looking and trying to find accommodation from your home country. But of course, there are certain ways in which you could always find out if someone is trying to scam you. For example, most of the times they'll try to insist that you pay the money without even looking at the house or sometimes they'll tell you a price which is just too good to be true. But despite all of those risk factors involved, I would highly recommend that you find a house and accommodation before you reach. It will relieve you of a lot of headache. I do know of friends who actually rented Airbnb for a couple of days and tried to find accommodation. But I do know that some of them really struggled to find good accommodation. I'm sure you will also find it helpful. All the best and I'm sure you'll have an excellent stay. Take care.